Okay, this is the second video involving vectors. The idea of this video is you're going to learn some fundamental procedures and particularly be able to do vector products, both the scalar or dot product and the cross product. As always, I'm not trying to teach you the mathematics, I'm just trying to teach you how to use Maple to do the mathematics you already know. Let's get started. Okay, let's dot this simple vector of 1, 2 by a vector of 3, 4. So what you can do is you can go down into the palettes, into the common symbols palette. Don't select the very largest one. Don't select the very tiny one. Select the Goldilocks one right in the middle, and it looks like a big black dot. And then you've put in 3, 4, and it will do that calculation that way. If you prefer not to use the palettes, you can use a period to say a vector multiplication. 1, 2, period, 3, 4, and it will look like that. Remember, 1, 2 times, star as in the asterisks above the 8, 3, 4 will not work because you're not multiplying as scalar units, you're multiplying by the vectors. Next, what if you want to multiply two vectors that you've already created? That's fairly simple. We could again do a period. Oh no, the dot product. Oops, make sure it's out of here. The dot product, got to put it in the right spot. And then B. And it will return this response. Now, since Maple doesn't know anything about the properties of the scalars A1, A2, A3, or B1, B2, 3, it assumes what if these are complex numbers. So it does a complex dot product. So what you can do is if you don't like that and you know that all the values are reals, you can copy, you can put paste down here, and then you can say, do this calculation assuming real, and it will then print it out that way with all these variables as real. Finally, you can also do this calculation with the actual procedure, writing out the actual procedure. It's stored in the linear algebra package. So if you say linear algebra colon dash dot product, open parentheses A, comma B, and again, we'll do it assuming real, it will do exactly the same calculation. A very useful procedure is the norm procedure. Most of the time, you're doing a calculating the norm using Euclidean geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a vector called or I should say a function called v length, which is past a vector v. And it basically calls the linear algebra colon dash norm procedure for which it sends it the vector v and tells it to calculate using Euclidean geometry. Uh, so if you could also rewrite this as v of v. linear algebra norm v2 and those two procedures will do exactly the same thing. So if I had to ask her what is the v length of a vector of a vector 1 1 1 it will come back with a square root of 3. And in fact if I ask her what is the vector of a, B, C. Again, not knowing anything about the properties of the scalar, assuming they could be complex, the response comes back as the sum of the magnitudes squared. But of course, as always, what you can do is you can simplify. Sim. The previous line. Assuming real and it will take away all the absolute value signs. Another useful procedure that you will find in the linear algebra package is the normalization function or normalization procedure. For example, what if we want to actually know is the normalized value of V, uh, where V is ABC, we call linear 
algebra colon dash normalize and then we give it the vector in this case it will be a b c and again we have to say how are we going Euclidean how are we going to normalize it we're going to normalize it using Euclidean geometry and when you do you get a response that looks like that the normalization procedure is very useful for creating unit vectors so let's say if I want to create the unit vector based on the following vector let's say V is a vector which is made up of 3, 4, and minus 5. So there's our vector. I've created this lovely little function here, which is going to be sent a vector and sends it into the longer word. And so I can say v, which is a unit vector by calling uh, command shift and then putting a little caret above it, is equal to v unit of v. And it returns that value. And again, to see if v our unit vector really is a v unit vector, if we say v and then the dot and v again, i.e. this vector dotted with itself, it should come back one, which it does. Okay. Sometimes it's useful to figure out the angle between any two vectors. I've created some vectors here, which I've actually drawn. Let's put go up to the restart and hit enter. Let's create this V length function, which will use Euclidean geometry. Let's create V1 and V2. Let's plot it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the fact that V1 dot V2 must be equal to the magnitude of V1 times the magnitude of V2 times the cosine of the angle between the two. So that's our equation. So we're basically just going to say V1, and then we'll put a period in, and you'll notice the instant I put in V2, it recognizes this is going to be a vector multiplication. Two. This is equivalent to our V length of V2. 1 times not dot product v length of v 2 times the cosine of the angle between the two, which I will call phi. So if I and enter, it actually does that calculation. So it's pretty easy. We can actually get the phi value by essentially solving this, and since this is going to be a floating point solve, we're going to floating solve this, our equation one, for the value of phi. And when we do, we get a value that looks like this. Now, the problem, of course, is this is in radians. This is not in degrees. So we have to convert it to degrees. We can use a convert function, or what I could do is I could just simply say phi in degrees is saying phi, and there are 180 degrees in pi radians. And then when we hit enter, we get a value of 80 degrees. OK, our next example is we often want to do a cross product. And cross products are notorious for nobody remembers how to do them, or it's a pain in the butt to do them. So I've set up some vectors here. They're, of course, in three dimensions. And we want to do this cross product, which we will call z. And it literally is v. Let's make it v cross w. So I'll put in a v properly. And then we go over to our common symbols. We look for what looks like a cross product. There it is. We put in the cross in. We put the W in. And what it does is it properly figures out all the multiplications that are necessary, which we can see here, here, and here. Here are two more vectors, a and b. You may notice that they are only along the xy plane. There is no z component. So if we are going to find c as essentially the vector of a cross b, we say c colon equals is defined as a as the vector with the cross product and b. 
and it turns out to be a value that's strictly in the z direction. You can also do it this way. Again, all it really is doing is calling from the linear algebra package colon dash the cross product where it is passing A and B. And it's doing that calculation there. Finally, using the fact that I can cut and paste my videos, we will create C and we will use C and A. We will plot all three of the vectors and we will put this on a three dimensional scale, which you can see here. And as you can see, A, which is in the dark red, points this way, B, which is in the blue, which points that way. If you take your right hand and force the red into the blue, looking at your the thumb of your right hand, you will see that it points strictly in the Z direction. I also hope you look at the document that's associated with this video. Again, troubleshooting problems are placed there. You can find solutions to them. Lots of examples.